Welcome to this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. I'm your host, Leah Chang. Congratulations to Broadway veteran Darren Lee on making his West End debut in The King and I at the Dominion Theater, where he's starring opposite Helen George for a strictly limited run through March 2nd. I had a chance to chat with Darren in New York prior to his return to London. Today, I'm finally having the opportunity to sit down with Darren Lee, one of the most elegant men ever to cross the stage. (laughs) Welcome, Darren. (laughs) Thank you. It's a delight to be here. I am so happy that we finally get to speak. Um, You've had quite a year. Yeah. But um, we're going to start off with what's coming up next, which is... So coming up next, I am going to be performing the king of siam in the king and i the uk production of the king and i that's going it'll be my west end debut at the dominion theater oh my god that is so exciting i'm I'm really thrilled well you've also actually been on the uk tour for a period of time that is correct so um, since january i've been touring the uk and so um very similar to the way that i saw a lot of the u.s um, on a u.s national tour of a show um i've been able to see all of these different cities sort of um, play these different houses, um, sort of do something touristy during the day, and then I'm grateful to be able to have a show to go to at night. What does it mean to you to be making your West End debut? Um, it is thrilling. It's something that I never honestly, maybe something that I hoped in the back of my mind would happen. Um, you know, having spent a good 20 years performing on Broadway, I thought, well, maybe there'll be an opportunity for me to to, to maybe have a, a, a show in the West End. Mm-hmm. And so to be able to be able to do it at this time in my life, to be able to do it with this role in this show is something that I never could possibly have imagined. And, and I'm more than honored and delighted to be able to do it. Now, you've had a really amazing career on Broadway as an actor, singer, dancer, but um, over the last 10 years, you've actually been exercising a different creative muscle. Shall we talk about the different projects that you've been working on this year? Sure. Um, So um, I I did actively step away from performing for about a decade to to pursue um, things creatively as a director and a choreographer. And so in this, um, in the past couple years, I've had the opportunity to, to work as, uh, on several brand new musicals. Mm. Um, one of them is um, uh, Mr. Holland's Opus. I served as the choreographer and as the associate director, and that was by B.D. Wong and Wayne Barker. Um, I'm in development for a new show called The Gifted Prince that is supposed to have its debut at Theatre Calgary in 2025-26. Oh, Stanford Arima? That is correct. Yep, uh, a wonderful colleague from Allegiance. We work together, and um, and I also um, just um, directed and choreographed this production at the Phoenix Theatre Company um, of a brand new musical um, based on the 1989 Tiananmen Square incident. What was your very first professional job? My very first professional job was um, my dance teacher and my parents sent a VHS tape um, to Star Search, and I was 11 years old, and I was on the very first um, junior star search that they ever had um, and it was in the dance category I did a, a duet and her name was Heather Hoffman and, and, we, <laughs> and we won their overall star potential time now for the first of two junior star search dance categories later on you'll see solo dancing but right now we present the contenders in the group dancing category first up is a duo from Westminster she's nine years old he's 11 welcome the dance team of Heather Hoffman and Darren Lee
Lee. Cast your vote, judges. The judges give dancers Heather Hoffman and Darren Lee three and a half stars. Their opponents, six feet three, receive. Three and a quarter stars. So. Congratulations. You just won over $2,000. How long have you been dancing together? I've been, we've been dancing together for about a month. A month. About a month? That's all? <laughs> you just hardly met, right? Are you planning to make dancing a career for yourself? Yes. Well, you're really good. Congratulations. <laughs> Prior to being submitted for Star Search, what kind of professional, what kind of training had you had? Um, I, um, well, if we go back to like when I first w had a desire to dance, I grew up in the 70s. My parents, I, I really, grew up where? I, uh, I grew up in Southern California okay. in the 70s, and I really intimately remember my parents disco dancing in the living room and watching them wow. and watching uh, even, uh, I mean, as any kid, I think, but as an, as an Asian American kid, to see your parents interact in a way that was joyous mm. and, and had a certain amount of like synergy was really thrilling to me. And I think it impacted me too because I listened to those albums and I would dance around the living room and I would, I would you know, try, I think to sort of, uh, it was just a really joyful thing to see. Um, they had a talent show at my elementary school okay. and I came home and I asked my mom, I, t I told my mom I was going to be in the talent show and she said, that's great Darren, what's your talent? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I said, I'm going to dance and I said, and you're going to make me a costume. <gasps> and so my mom made me a costume that was kind of like, like Bob Fosse kind of looking, right. had a little bowler hat and right. a little bow tie and, and I told the teacher just to fade the music out because I didn't choreograph it. I said, I just got up there and I danced and I said, fade the music out when I leave the stage. And that was my <laughs> first, that was my first experience doing any kind of performing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just, I don't know. I was fearless. I mean, I wish I had that kind of fearless now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's crazy. Yeah. When I introduced you, I, I introduced you as one of the most elegant men to cross the stage. Yes. The last time I got to see you on stage was in Jason Ma's Gold Mountain. Yes. So can you talk to me about that experience of doing that show? Yes. Um, Gold Mountain was an extraordinary show to be a part of. Um, I, I was very fortunate to be in the original company of Miss Saigon with Jason Ma, and we were both performers together. And I do remember even at, at the time that it was a show that Jason was developing, mm. you know? And so um, to be able to have that particular show come around many years later and have its world premiere and to be part of it was just absolutely thrilling. Um, I thought it was really exciting because it's, it's most of my career had had been being sort of um, maybe one or two um, Asian cast members, mm. you know, in a cast of predominantly Caucasian people generally, right. and so it was really thrilling to have a show that was all Asian and all male. Um, and so the so instead of just being sort of a token or sort of having sort of a small character part, the actual essence and humanity of these gentlemen is what was featured. And so it was right. absolutely thrilling for that reason. Well, it was such an amazing company of artists. And I know that um, for many of the cast members, it's an experience unlike any other no, yeah, and probably will never absolutely. happen again. So. Well, I hope it happens again, so we but yes. hope yes, that we eventually need to make more experiences it finds like a theater, yes. <laughs> it finds a theater, yes. a home. Absolutely. Um, I'd like to know what it means to you to be an Asian American theater maker in this time. Um, it, it means the world to me. You know, in the beginning, I just wanted to perform and I just wanted to get work. And then at a certain point in my career, I, I wanted to be cast non-traditionally. I would consciously, if there was an Asian show happening, if a production, honestly, of The King and I or Flower Jump Song or something was happening, at the same time another show was happening that I was able to audition for and get cast in, right. I would actively try to be cast in that show. Right. Um, so that was the early part of my career. I did find that coming back around to performing, coming back sort of as a character man, coming back as a theater maker, someone who can now help to hire other people. And to have a seat at the table. Yes, exactly. Has made all the difference. Because now I, 
I, I accept and I'm very honored to have the responsibility to expand the diversity, mm. to create the opportunities for other people mm -hmm. that, that I didn't necessarily have. Right. And now I'm very proud to be working with an all Asian company that I can help assemble, you know, um, and, and I help recruit the people right. that may be um, doing exactly what I was doing then, but like bring them back into the fold. That to me was one of the exciting things that I got to see you interacting with on um, BD's Mr. Holland's opus. Yes, yes. So um, he cast what six or seven Asian yeah, he, American he, absolutely. actors, I think, singer, dancers I think, who were all like serious triple threats. Absolutely. Not only did they have to sing, dance, and act, but they all had to play an in a musical instrument uh, well enough to wow. be able to be the soloist in the finale with wow. that particular. Yeah, it was. It was the wow, hardest show ever insane. to cast on. Insane. <laughs> yeah. Insane. But it was an extraordinary opportunity. January 31st at the Dominion Theatre on the West End in London. Come see Darren and Helen George and the phenomenal company of The King and I. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Until next time.